We know a deck has 52 cards, so we've created two cards. Here's the worst way to create 52 cards. Uh, and then put, you know, corresponding values up here. So that's a miserable way to create lots of cards. Let's create lots of cards in a reasonable way. So we'll make an array. So it's an array because we have the square brackets. So I want to call this one deck, but the notes call it, or the book calls it cards. Okay, so this will create an array of length 52. But notice we didn't create, we didn't actually have any new card. I really don't want that either. Let's, uh, let's get this down below and then I'm gonna just comment out all this stuff we were messing with before. Okay, so we're gonna make an array of cards and then I'm just gonna sout, uh, it's lowercase card zero is, okay, oh, pluralize, pluralize. Okay, let's run this. All right, so what in the world is this null? What happened here? Well, let's think about it, cards, uh, we created the array, but we never actually, there's 52 slots in the array. And a good way to think about this is this memory diagram in the book. It goes from zero to 51. Remember we started zero, not at one. So from zero to 51. So there's all these spaces for cards. So a good way to think about this is maybe a, a bunch of uh, spots like cup holders or shelves. There's basically like 52 cup holders, but no cups in them yet. But 52 cups will fit perfectly in there. We just have to start putting cups in. Uh, in this case, we're putting cards in. All right, so let's go ahead and this right here, we could put this code in and it's gonna produce exactly what it says. So there's no cards yet. All right, now let's create intentionally a null pointer. Let's have some fun. Oh, all right. Well, there's an error in the book right there. All right, why is this red? Rank has private access and cards, which means you cannot access rank, here we go, because it's private. But good news is we have the get rank method. So we really should not be calling rank, we should be calling get rank. There we go. All right, no more errors. Now we can have some fun. Oh no. So one thing about the output here is that what you see in red is coming from the error stream, not the print stream. And if you notice system.out.print, that's the output stream right there. The error stream, you could actually write to the error stream if you're so inclined. You just replace out with er, and whatever you print will come out in red. Uh, now one warning about this, you can totally do it if you wanna have fun and print everything in red, it's fine. Uh, one warning about this is that the order things come out may not necessarily be the order that they actually occurred here, and that's uh, because of buffering. So don't assume that just because this right here, this print in black is above the exception, it doesn't necessarily mean the exception happened afterwards. It usually does, but not always. There's plenty of times where the order uh, gets reversed. So just be a little bit careful about that. All right, so let's deal with this. What in the world's going on? No pointer exception, line 42. All right, so cards exist because we made the new card array, so no problem with cards. In fact, we used it just fine before. But what did we do with it? So at the, the first card, which is at position zero, we tried to call the get rank method. So what does get rank do? It's supposed to return this dot rank, but remember we never actually created a card. 
So how in the world are we going to get a rank off a card that doesn't exist? That's what no pointer exception means. It means you tried to access something that you never created. So we need to create it. So we're going to go cards zero equals, let's just, uh, I like the ace of hearts. Hopefully that's it right there. Pretty sure. Boom, run. All right, so I only saw the one come out because that was the get rank. If I want to see the actual card, I could sout it. Sout card zero. Okay, there we go. Card zero, ace of hearts. So that's what I was expecting. Let's fill up the entire array right now. All right, how do we do that? Good news is we do it with the for loop. You don't want to manually type in 52 of these. That's insane. All right, what are we doing here? Well, we have an index out here and that's going to start at zero. So that's the index in the array. Now there's a for loop. Suit starts at zero. Suit can go up to three and suit goes up by one each time. Now this is a nested for loop. So the outside one is going to go through the suits. The inside one is going to go through the ranks and at position index, we're going to create a new card with rank and suit these values that started at zero and one and go up to three and 13. And then we do index plus plus. All right, we're gonna go ahead. Well, if I run this, there's no print statement to know what happened. So we better print all this out. Uh, I'm gonna skip right down here to print deck. Oh, they wrote that as a method, no problem. I'll just unwrite it as a method. All right, this is called a for each loop right here. Now, this says for the variable type is card. The name we're going to use is card. This may be a little strange. I'll rename it to C. Uh, so for each card C in the array of cards. So it's going to go one by one through the array of cards. And it's just going to print out each card. Here we go. And you're going to see all the cards printed somewhere. I probably had that extra print statement that I don't really need anymore. I don't need to do any of that stuff up there. All right. So we can print out all 52 cards, the regular for loop. I would probably do it like this. I less than uh, 52. I like to go plus plus I. And instead of printing C, all right, we should get the exact same result. Okay, so if you're sitting there, you're thinking, ah, oh, well, why in the world did I do this instead of stick to what was there before? because there's less typing here. There's just less stuff and there's more stuff here. So the bonus is there's less stuff. There's like no numbers. You just loop all the way through. The drawback, however, is you don't know where you're looking through the array. If I have the integer I, I know if I'm halfway through the array, if the array is, what's halfway, 26, I'm halfway through. If the array, if, if I is 13, I'm, a, third, a quarter of the way through, so I can know how far through I am. But more importantly, what I can do, it actually lets me access not just the current card, but if I wanted to, I could access maybe a card that's halfway down the deck, or if I need to look ahead at the next card, I could do an I plus one. If I wanna look at the previous card, I could do I minus one. And you have none of that ability down here. You can only look at the current card. You can't look at the one before or after because you're not using an index. And later what we're going to do is we're going to take two card objects and we're going to switch them. And when you use the for each loop, you're only looking at one card at a time. You cannot switch two cards. 
Uh, what you can do is sort of cheat. You can do this. Uh, so if I need to use the uh, index value, I can declare it before the for loop. And then I do have to somewhere increment it properly. So I could do this. And now if, if, you, if you really wanted to use this for loop and you needed an index, you really should have just used this for loop. But anyways, it should produce the exact same result. Uh, and there's also a two string method for arrays. So we can also do that. So we printed out this whole thing. For now, we'll just comment that out. Drink cards. All right, so what is the problem here? We'll probably import. All right, we need to import the array utilities. And I guess I didn't grab the semicolon. Okay, so let's run this. This is the only print statement. So whatever we see on the screen is from this. And you see right here, that all of the cards are printed out. Now they're printed out as an array with square brackets and then all the elements are separated by commas here. And you can scroll all the way over and see the end. All right, so lots of ways to turn this into a string.